Hello, Anyas. Welcome to Chinese Crimes, a channel dedicated to real-life crime stories in China. Now, let's observe the video clip. The horrifying scene you just witnessed was captured by the surveillance camera of a hotel. A woman screams loudly as she tries to flee from the room in the early morning. However, she's pulled back by a terrifying force. On February 8, 2015, just 10 days before the Lunar New Year, the Ma'ashan Police Department in Anhui Province received a concerning report. A man from Hefei Anhui reported that his wife, Mrs. Wang, had arrived in Ma'ashan five days ago to meet a close friend. Since then, he's been unable to contact her, and her phone has been turned off. It's worth noting that this female friend and Mrs. Wang had never met before. The couple are journalists, and they live harmoniously and are close to their neighbors. They jointly operate a hardware store in Hefei and have a stable income. He never harbored ill feelings towards others, and his life was very simple. However, his wife, Mrs. Wang, suddenly disappeared like this. Her family members are living in anxiety. Her one-year-old child cries incessantly and searches for her mother. Upon receiving the report, the police immediately began to gather information about Mrs. Wang's identity. It was known that she arrived in Ma'ashan City on February the 3rd and stayed at a hotel located in the city center. The hotel's surveillance camera recorded a terrifying scene at 6 p.m. on the same day. Wang dragged her suitcase and approached the reception desk to check in. After receiving the room card, she entered the elevator and went up to the 14th floor to room 1453. It was a room with a large round bed. According to the hotel's records, Wang only stayed overnight and checked out on the next day. To find clues, the police continued to check the surveillance video. The camera only captured Wang's image in the hotel, but there was no footage of her leaving. The checkout time was recorded as 8.28 a.m. on February 4th. Furthermore, the surveillance camera at the front desk recorded the image of a man. He was wearing a jumpsuit and a cap. Along with that, two suitcases, one large and one small, also appeared in the image. After Wang's husband and friends in Ma and Shan were invited to identify the identity of the mysterious man, none of them knew who he was and could not provide any information about him. So, what's the connection between this man and Mrs. Wang's disappearance? The hotel is equipped with 24-7 continuous video surveillance systems. At 12.19 a.m. on February 4th, a man appeared in the surveillance camera image on the 14th floor. After exiting the elevator, he walked straight to room 1453. In his hand, he didn't hold anything. He went to the door and rang the bell, but received no response from inside. Next, he knocked on the door a few more times. Finally, when the door opened, he walked straight into the room. Because there was no image of Wang leaving the room during the surveillance, it was quite likely that she opened the door for the man. The man entered the room normally, without any signs of violence. He then left the room and returned after 10 minutes. This time, it was still Wang who opened the door. Finally, the terrifying scene was discovered at 2 a.m. The woman rushing out of the door in the image was Wang. As soon as she stepped out, she was pulled back by a hand from behind. The force of this pull was very strong. Both of her feet were off the ground, and it was clear she wasn't wearing shoes. This indicates that she ran out in a panicked and hurried state. By looking at her mouth shape, the police concluded that she was trying to call for help before being pulled back into the room. The door quickly closed, and from then on, Wang did not appear outside anymore. From these developments, the police concluded that Wang's disappearance was definitely related to this man. At 3.46 a.m., the mysterious man stealthily opened the door. He peeked out to observe the hallway, then closed the door again. By 4.45 a.m., the door opened, and the man stepped out alone. 
This time, he wore a hat and held keys tightly in his hand, heading towards the elevator. He descended the elevator and left the hotel, stopping at a cafe on foot. He bought a bottle of wine and quickly continued his journey. By 5.22 a.m., he returned to the room, this time swiping the card himself to open the door. At 6.43 a.m., he stepped out again and had an exchange with the receptionist on the first floor. In such a short night, he entered and exited several times. At 7.48 a.m., the man returned to the room 1453 for the last time. This time, he was dragging a large suitcase into the room. By 8.19 a.m., he left again to pull out the large suitcase. Simultaneously, he took Wang's small suitcase. This detail drew special attention from the police. The large suitcase he pulled was about 70 centimeters tall and 50 centimeters wide. Meanwhile, Wang's height was only about 1.48 meters. Theoretically, her body could fit into that suitcase. Combined with previous circumstances and experience from investigated cases, the police concluded that Wang might have been murdered. At 8.28 a.m., the man pushed the two suitcases to the hotel reception desk. He checked out and left, leaving a big question mark in the receptionist's mind. At this moment, the police decided to enter room 1453 for investigation. However, after several days had passed, the room had become messy and many people had entered, complicating the investigation process. At the scene, the remaining evidence could not determine anything. However, after questioning the hotel staff, a new clue was discovered. On February 4th, after checking out, the housekeeping staff proceeded with their duties as usual. But when they reached room 1453, they found the room in disarray. The comforter on the bed was disheveled, and the bedsheet was no longer in its original position. In particular, they found some blood on the pillow. But the staff had encountered similar bloodstains during previous work, so they didn't pay much attention to it. They washed and changed the bedding as usual without much notice. Based on this clue, the police conducted on-the-spot investigations at room 1453. Indeed, blood had flowed from the core of the pillow on the bed. After DNA comparison, the police determined that it was Wang's blood. She had shared the room with a man. So what happened in the room that night? The police immediately informed all train stations, explored surrounding hotels, and checked all routes. They found that a man, after leaving the hotel, did not take a taxi as predicted. Instead, he pulled two suitcases and walked on the street. It could be assumed that he wanted to find an opportunity to abandon or hide those suitcases. Therefore, the most important thing was to monitor all his movements. Now, it was 8 a.m., the peak time of the workday. In case he wanted to move by public transport, the likelihood of him carrying two suitcases on a bus was low. Therefore, the police focused on checking taxis coming and going. After investigation, a taxi driver reported having a male passenger in his luggage seeming quite heavy. The driver got out to help him load them into the trunk. However, the passenger firmly refused and did everything himself. After getting into the car, the man asked the driver to stop and let him off at Hongqi Bridge in Ma'anshan. This was a place where many taxis converged to go to various destinations. Based on clothing characteristics, posture, and other factors, the police quickly realized that the person sitting in the front passenger seat was the one they were looking for. They immediately contacted the taxi driver via the license plate number. The taxi driver recounted that the man got out near a residential area in Shizu Town, Lingtai District. Nearby, there's a resettlement housing community, an area lacking surveillance cameras. With no information about the man's identity, the investigation became passive. Early in the morning after the incident, the man walked into a cafe. At 11 p.m. that same day, he appeared outside the hotel. From monitoring him at the cafe, they noticed he had used the internet at 7 p.m. The cafe's internet registration showed the man's name as Shenzhen. 
After comparing the photo from his ID card, the police confirmed he was the man who had entered the hotel. Later, he continued to move to the Lingtai town. With the support of local police, the police finally found his residence address. The police quickly deployed forces and were ready to arrest this criminal. One afternoon, Shenzhen confidently boarded a bus from Lingtai District to Guangzhou City, unaware that the police had been watching him throughout the journey, waiting for the right moment to apprehend him. Before he could make it home, Shenzhen was finally arrested on the bus. The surprise and fear were evident on the criminal's face as the police surrounded him. During the search, they found Wang's ID card and bank card in Shenzhen's bag. These pieces of evidence further proved his crimes. Taken to the police station, Shenzhen couldn't escape the pursuit of justice. Under pressure and fear during interrogation, he confessed to his crimes. From these confessions, the police learned that Shenzhen and Wang were not previously acquainted. They were just friends. However, he lost control for some reason and killed Wang. After the incident, Shenzhen left the hotel with the victim's body in a suitcase and buried it in a nearby forest. The police later found the burial site and collected more crucial evidence. Through documents and personal information, the police learned that Shenzhen was born in 1987 and lived in Lingtai District, Guangzhou City. Before the incident, in January 2015, he met Wang in an online chat group in Hefei. They were the same age, both feeling bored with their families and current lives. Through interactive conversations over a few days, they felt interested and decided to meet up. Wang, coming from Hefei, set foot in the big city for the first time and checked into a hotel. Meanwhile, Shenzhen kept a secret, ready to carry out his dark plan. And at midnight, the two met. As soon as they met, Wang asked Shenzhen to go downstairs to register with the hotel. Shenzhen left the room for a moment, but during that time, his intention changed. He wondered why bother to register. A twisted feeling overwhelmed him. He decided not to register any personal information and returned to room 1453. Immediately afterward, the two engaged in sexual intercourse. Shenzhen shared that after the incident. They easily chatted and suddenly brought up the issue of the room fee. Wang asked him to go to the hotel reception the next day and pay more than 200 yuan for the room. However, Shenzhen didn't bring much money and felt helpless. He didn't realize that this made Wang extremely angry. The two began arguing about who would pay for the room. At that moment, Wang's wallet was on the bedside table. Shenzhen had the idea to steal the wallet. At that time, the wallet contained over 1,000 yuan in cash and some bank cards. As he began threatening to ask for the bank card's password, Wang told him. Shenzhen was also surprised at how cooperative she was. Meanwhile, he was using his mobile phone to verify the authenticity of the bank card password. Wang decided to take the opportunity to escape from room 1453. She rushed to open the door and ran out of the room. Shenzhen was surprised and hurriedly chased after her, pulling her back into the room. She screamed loudly in the room, but it was too late, which made Shenzhen extremely fearful. He saw Wang's silk scarf lying near the bed and quickly tightened it around her neck. While Shenzhen was in turmoil, which led to Wang's death, he felt terrified. He hastily left room 1453. He then bought some wine to calm down. However, all the stores were closed. He went to the cafe he usually frequented and learned that there was no wine available. Finally, he bought a bottle of red and left. For the third time, Shenzhen entered room 1453 at 4 a.m. His mind was in chaos. However, he attempted to dismember Wang's body to evade feelings of guilt. At 6 a.m. on February 4th, he stepped out of the room 1453, determined to buy the largest suitcase possible and return to the hotel to resolve the issue. He then checked out and carried the two huge suitcases out of the hotel. Initially, he planned to throw the suitcases somewhere, but he realized there was nowhere truly discreet. 
He knew that any place he threw the suitcases would be quickly discovered. In the end, he decided to take them back to his hometown in Lingtai District to hide them. That was where he was arrested by the police the next day upon his return. Shenzhen, 28 years old, had been married for six years. People around him thought he was introverted and reserved. With a low level of education, he abandoned his family at a young age and worked at a construction site. Loneliness and pain in life led Shenzhen to the internet. In 2009, he met a girl online named Liu. They didn't take long to decide to get married. Initially, their relationship was very good, but the joy didn't last long. Shenzhen soon discovered his wife's illness, and she couldn't bear children. Despite being treated everywhere, her condition didn't improve. The illness spread and haunted their married life. Both of them felt disgusted with this married life. Moreover, Shenzhen was not good at communication and had difficulty expressing affection for his wife. They just tried in every way to maintain their marital relationship, even though they weren't happy. Just six years into their marriage, Shenzhen and his wife still hadn't found the joy of being parents. Neighbors and elders in the family kept criticizing and worrying. Shenzhen became increasingly frustrated in the prolonged gloomy atmosphere. He got used to seeking satisfaction in the online world, where he could communicate with others comfortably. And Wang's appearance relieved the pressure Shenzhen was facing, but this illicit reunion turned into a tragedy. Wang's husband could never have imagined that things would turn out this way. He didn't understand why his wife would put herself in such a dangerous situation, even risking her life. Wang knew nothing about Shenzhen. Simply chatting with strangers online laid the groundwork for a tragedy. For Shenzhen, lack of communication and marital relations drove him crazy. He decided to see marriage as a formality and overlook it. In a fit of madness, he plunged into a life of crime. Despite his regrets, he couldn't redeem his mistakes. His actions became intentional murder and robbery. On July 25, 2015, Shenzhen was sentenced to death by the Ma and Shan People's Court. The development of the internet has opened up for ways for us to make friends with new people. However, it also warns us not to make wrong decisions just because of fleeting emotions. That is the valuable lesson from this story. What did you learn, my friend? And how do you perceive this case?